live. It means you can hear me. Thank you. Um, we are back again with um, uh, projects, which hey, is. Uh, good morning, Sam. Good morning. Good morning, Judlin. Um, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. you. How about you? Ah, very well. Very well. Very well. That's nice to hear. Good. Um, I believe everybody should be very excited today. Um, we should all be somehow happy that we've been able to bring this um, journey to an end. Um, this is telling us that just a portion of the entire program is completed. And it's little by little, by the time you realize you have graduated and that's how the whole thing is. It's all about at least tighten your seatbelt, putting yourself together and be focused in whatever you do. You definitely get there. So I think everybody should be excited as um, I don't see any big damage in this class um, in terms of um, um, grading. All right. So um, before we start, anybody have a question, any issue, any concern before we start? Any question, any issue, concerns, suggestion? Some, how about our exam? Is it hard or? Oh, no, 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 no. The, the exams is not considered to be hard. It's, um, the exams is just about, say, about 70 to 80% you have seen it in this class. Okay? About 70 to 80% you have seen it, and 100% you have seen it and heard it, just that it has been twangled a little bit. I tweak the questions, so it's something that you know, it's something that we have treated. You shouldn't um, have, there is no cause for you to panic, all right? Um, let me see if I can, um, well, I'll be able to give you that information um, to tell you exactly what we have. I think um, it's about, um, it's about 45 questions, okay? It's about 45 questions. And out of these 45 questions, um, three is a written um, um, th written questions um, in a form of discussion that you're gonna write about. Um, I'm not expecting you to write a book. A maximum of two paragraphs is enough, all right? Some, you don't even need to write two paragraphs. When you have a question, and the question is asking you, list and explain. That is what you are supposed to do. You don't need to tell the professor you, you can write a different book. The question says, list and explain. So if it is list and explain, all you do is to list and then explain. So list and explain the colors in um, um, rainbow or rainbow colors. List and explain. So you list. Maybe we have yellow, we have red, we have blue, we have green. What does green stand for? Then you you just give it give your your um, definition or your explanation as to what green stands for, as to what red stands for, as to what yellow stands for, as to whatever other colors that you might find in a rainbow will stand for. Period. You're done. You made justice to that question. But if you want to spend too much time and write the whole book at the end of the day it's not going to help you because it's not attracting any marks or any um, extra credit. Although it's good for maybe um, an instructor to read, it doesn't really serve any good purpose because you are just going overboard. You are not just doing what the question is for. So it's not any difficult thing. Um, there is a scenario if there is three written questions I want you to attempt all, okay? Three written questions. I want you to attempt all. Um, there, is, um, there is one scenario question that I'm asking you. I put a question there. 
for example, um, like um, that question that we did about um, six or oh, four, five weeks ago about um, those real estate springing up that we're going to have uh, maybe um, a lot of people being able to access an apartment building or is going to create shortage of apartment building. What is going to happen? Are they going to um, have an increase in their prices and would they continue to build? This is the kind of question I'm going to bring to you. Then you will do what? Formulate your understanding as to what demand and supply is talking about. You understand? So when you do that, you just write it down. That's all I'm looking for. Okay. So you could probably explain in this context, you could probably explain what demand is, um, what causes um, the demand to rise, being um, specifically to the question. Probably, maybe um, they decided to stop building, and a lot of people are also looking for the property uh, or apartment. What happens to the price of the, um, uh, what do we call it? The apartment will determine by what? The forces of the demand, and then it's going to cause supply to, um, um, it's going to cause um, the price to increase because the forces of demand and supply is pushing the price up. And that is what I'm looking for. It's not anything so um, big. Apart from that, you also have um, some true or false questions. You have some multiple choice questions. You have fill in the space questions that you have been doing all the time. The only new thing that you see in this exams is um, matching, matching questions, okay? You have, I think, two matching questions, whereby I'm going to bring something to you like um, maybe a leaf or a paper with colors. And then I'll write the colors on the right side and then I'll put the, col uh, the papers on the left side. So maybe I'll have red, yellow, blue colors um, in a form of paper card on the left. Then I'll have the red, yellow, blue in written. Okay. Now I'll tell you to match them. That's it. This is the only new thing you have never seen in the class. And apart from that, I believe um, you should be able to do justice with it. There are some calculations. Um, it's not any crazy calculations. You have been doing it all along. And you should be able to at least um, know how to um, come up with it. Um, when we say, um, 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 uh, how do we how do we arrive at marginal cost? Uh, what, what, how do we arrive at um, uh, marginal revenue? All these things you should know. I'm not saying that is the question coming. That you should be uh, marginal cost is equivalent to uh, maybe um, uh, marginal revenue then it means this or that. Know how to do those calculations. I'm not saying marginal cost and the marginal revenue is what is coming. I don't want to just take your attention, but know how to do these calculations. Um, I hope I have um, given you almost every aspect of the exams. And that is what I said. It is 45 questions, um, but um, three written questions. And I want you to attempt all. All right. Any more questions? So, Sam, what is the coverage? What chapter? Is it cover all the chapter? Say that again. Is it cover all the chapters that we learn? No, um, Judlin, we gave an area for you to study. Um, I'm not sure if you, you, you were not in the class. There was an area or areas that I gave out for you to concentrate your, um, your, your studies on or your revisions on. I gave you um, areas including the fundamentals. Fundamentals is um, the module one. Module one is what is talking about fundamentals. You need to also know about the demand, which is module two. You need to know about the supply, which is module four. You need to know about the, the market efficiency which is module six. You need to at least um, um, dip into the consumer choice, which is module eight. And we have perfect competition, perfect competition, uh, module 10. And then you also have questions coming from 
the monopolistic competition, the monopolistic competition, module 11. And then we have um, money, which is the last topic that we are treating today. We have some few questions coming from there. So ideally, um, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. Okay, so 13. Uh, okay, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so only 8 out of the 13 chapters we treated is featuring in this um, exams. Okay. Are you there, Judlin? Yes, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Apart from juggling, is anybody having issues? Oh, you can go ahead. I'm not going to take too much time of yours today. Um, money is a very practical um, topic, so it's not going to take us so much time. And I'll be able to leave you um, to go and then concentrate on your, um, your exams. It's a very simple, simple questions. If you only review the documents, uh, the materials, you'll be fine. And these, some of these questions, honestly, I can tell you, has been repeated. Okay, and sometimes I, 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 I sometimes don't get it that we we'll even treat a question, talk about it in class. People also go onto the platform to take exams and they get it wrong. That is the problem. So. If you only review, okay, if you only review what we have been doing or what you have been doing all along, you'll be fine. If I were you, apart from all the materials that I'll be reviewing, I'll be reviewing those homeworks and the assignment that I have opportunity or the, um, sorry, that you have, that you can, um, you'll be able to, sorry, you'll be able to go onto the platform to review the questions. I will do that. Some of the questions, it has been tweaked a little bit and that's all it is. All right, I believe I gave you more than enough um, information and hints on this exams. All right, so let's try to, kickstart today's um, agenda. Um, we're gonna be treating money, 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 money. Um, I know everybody likes money and that's all we are all working towards. We are in this class because of money. Um, we're trying to further our education to be able to get a better job or establish ourselves in um, a better position. That is why we are, um, we are here. So at the end of the day, we are here and what we are trying to do in life, it's all about money. It's not, I'm not saying life is all about money. Don't um, get me wrong. But whatever you need to do in life, you will need money to be able to do it, to be able to accomplish that. So that is money. Um, how did we get here? Why are we even talking about this? Why are we even trying to bring money into this class? I believe professionals, yes, indeed, we know that if we get to any organization, we will be able to um, get paid, um, negotiate on our salary and all those. Just last week, we talked about something, we spoke about um, something, and we were able to come up um, with all those things, and we know that the demand for um, resources tells us that at the end of the day, labor is going to get a benefit what we term as what? Wages. So although it's not all labor that will have a wage in terms of money, about the greater percentage will always get what? Wages in money. Okay, so it is very important. Money is very important in everything that we do. 
under the sun, okay? That is money. But as I was asking the question, well, how did we get here? And why do we even need to know about this? Before the advent of money, there was something, okay? Before the advent of money, there was what we term as butter system or butter, okay? Butter was also um, a way that people trade or those people in the olden days, that's how they trade um, because there was no money. So in quotes or quote unquote, that is their money, okay? Or their form of um, trade or exchange of goods and services, that is butter. And apparently, um, no matter what you do in life, you evaluate yourself as a human being. At the end of the day, you have to find out and see, am I doing good? Is it getting better or is it getting worse? Or it's not getting better and it's not getting worse. It's just um, standing at one particular point. What do I have to do? Yes, we have also spoken about decision making. Okay, you need economics. So this comes in and those um, forefathers, those who were uh, maybe uh, the past, uh, maybe 1800s, 1700s, whatever it is, decided that, hey, we are going through so much, all right? Using butter is not that perfect. So at a point, we need to do what? Change ourselves. We need to at least um, bring something in to be able to do what? Stimulate the way we operate, okay? And that might be end of what? butter but it did not just started it is sorry it did not just end it moved from one point to other so maybe they were exchanging goods and services at a point they will use some commodities to uh to symbolize money or to use as money and at a point they might feel that hey it's not that good to use that particular commodity as what as money so it keeps evolving okay it keeps evolving until today that we are able to see maybe a dollar or maybe um, um, a yen or a, any currency that you might be able to at least um, have okay that is what why we need to talk about money and it's important why is it so important because in the past you will get to a point that to be able to meet um, what we term as um, a double coincidence of wants, it's it's an issue, okay? I might have, maybe I have a glass of water, okay? But I need maybe a bread. I don't need the water. Judlin doesn't need water, but she has bread, okay? How do me and Judlin or Judlin and myself how are we going to do this kind of trade? It's not going to work. You should be able to get what? Somebody who needs water and the other needs bread to be able to do what? Certify that kind of what? Exchange or butter. That is what we term as double coincidence of want. So once you are able to get somebody who is prepared and willing to do what? Trade in for what you have, then that double coincidence of wants happens. But was it the challenge that also um, caused our forefathers, our leaders to think outside the box to bring something else? Yes, no, but all these things possibly could be, okay? It could be. There cannot be a situation that I have a product and I need something else and I keep walking or roaming all around in my community to be able to find that and I cannot find it. Okay, this is the very basis why money becomes so important in our life. That today, if you are in China or if you are in any part of the world that doesn't maybe um, use the United States dollar, you will be able to do what? Change that currency into the other currency and be able to use that money. If you're a trader, you move from one country to the other, one continent to the other to be able to trade, you will be able to do what? do the same thing. And that is why money tends to be very important in everything we do. Good. Without wasting time, I'm going to project my um, slides that will be able to um, kickstart the, the um, 
the program quickly. Is somebody able to see the slide? Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's Nora. Okay, she came in. Good. Um, perfect. So Nora, um, before we, we continue, I'm not sure if you have checked the portal. Your request was made, and um, every other um, student will benefit from that as well, okay? Yes, I have checked, and they are all fine now. Thank you. Okay, sure. You, you're welcome. So, um, now, um, let's see if we can go through what we are here for today, and that is money. I have given more than enough background as to how we got here. So... Uh, at the end of the day, um, anybody who doesn't want his paycheck, I'll give you my bank account, okay? Then you just wire it into it, and then that will be it. So by the end of this program or this section, we are expecting each and everyone on this platform to be able to do what? Explain the three functions of money, okay? What are the functions of money? You should be able to explain them, the three functions of money. Two. We should be able to do what? Categorize the different types of money into the major components of the money supply. Okay? At the end of this section, we should be able to do that. Again, we should be able to define the equation of exchange. The equation of exchange at the end of the section. We should also be able to explain the assets and liability held by a bank. Okay? Held by a bank. Further, we should be able to construct a module of money demand using the asset and transaction demands for money. Last but not the least, we should be able to illustrate the relationship between the supply of money and interest rate. Finally, we should be able to show how money supply and demand interacts, okay, to determine the equilibrium interest rate. And this is why we are here. And um, I was very happy to have put in this at the end of the day um, on our calendar, which everybody should be very happy about. That is money. At least you have some objective that by the end of this program, you're going to get some sort of increment in um, your salary. Good. So that is money. And I have um, spoken about it. Um, extensively okay that is money now let's kickstart that when we talk about money by definition what do we mean any item that both buyers and sellers will generally do what accept in exchange for goods and services don't forget any item okay that both buyers and sellers will generally accept in exchange for goods and services. Another thing you need to underline, generally, okay? Any item that both buyers and sellers will do what? Generally, accept, okay? Generally, okay, accept. So um, at the end of the day, that is what we have as money. So if at the end of the day, we are in... Um, um, Windsor University um, community where we 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 decided to uh, maybe use um, anything like a paper, okay, to be um, um, to be accepted to be used for exchange of goods and services in a general terms that where when you move from one shop to the other, one will not deny or decline it. Then it means that is what our money. I hope. That explanation gets to all of us. If you have any question, please quick, you just um, alert me and I'll be able to get to you quickly. Good. 
So there are three characteristics of money. Three characteristics of money. Okay. At the end of the day, what makes it money? What is the identity? Okay. Who am I? Who am I? If we say, oh, this is uh, maybe Jones. Who, who is Jones? What, what are the characteristics of Jones? How do you describe Jones? Okay. I'm doing all these things so that you have some sort of um, uh, uh, memory about what past. So that when you see this kind of question somewhere that lists the three characteristics of money and define it, you should be able to do what? Know what it is and then define it. Okay, so Jones um, have maybe um, he has a, a, a long eyebrow. Jones have a, a, a maybe a, a long ears, and then he has a very smallest body. Okay, this is the characteristics of Jones. This is how we describe Jones. So, how do we see money? What are the characteristics of money? Okay, money have the three characteristics, and the first one is what we term as what unit of accounts. Okay, unit of account that is money. Okay, at the end of the day, you should have unit of account as its what its characteristics, it identifies what money is. Okay, again, medium of exchange, medium of exchange. At the end of the day, we should do what see money in that category, medium of exchange. It, uh, at the end of the day, that's what we should be able to talk about money as what? Being what? Medium of exchange. And the third one is what? Stall of value. Stall of value. So at the end of the day, why is it called stall of value? Okay? Why is it called stall of value? Why? Is it possible that that money can be there uh, for uh, maybe a couple of years and you'll be able to um, say, put a, a specific number on it or you'll be able to say, I'm saving $20 and um, you'll be able to uh, prorate, prorate it for a period of time and you'll be able to see that at the end of the day, you have that value also. You see, that is, that is something that we say store. You are able to store its value for a period of time, store of value. Okay, for a period of time. That's why we have what? I don't know if somebody can tell us why we say a period of time for the store of value. I don't know if somebody can tell me. Why do we say that? Store of value can only be a period of time. Why do we say that? Is that what here? <laughs> yes, Professor. Award. Why do we say that? <clears throat> because it is uh, uh, like an evidence for uh, at some point, like this is the cost of, of the price at this time. Okay. Good. At least you have said something about it. It gives us an evidence that, yes, this is the price at this time. Yes, but there is something I'm looking for. Who is there? I'm not sure readers can talk today, but Noran, why do we even say store of value is a period of time? Why? There is something very important over there. Somebody can tell us. I'm looking for something which is happening very often today. Uh, if we put the money in the bank, we store money in the bank and it will increase a little. So maybe it's called the store value. Good. It will increase for a little. Okay, what does what what if it doesn't increase? What is causing that? What is causing that? What if it doesn't increase? What is causing that? There is something which is happening today, and every now and inflation. Every, say that again. Inflation, you mean, Professor? Thank you. There we go. You know, so at the end of the day, my twenty dollars today. Right, Noran, my $20 today that I will save today might not be of the same value next year because of what? Inflation. So store of value is a period of time, right? That's what I was trying to draw your attention to. So at the end of the day, the inflation can also do what? Have effect on your store of value, 
okay, on whatever money you save. So many a times um, when you go into, um, I don't know where you intend to specialize, but along the line, you find something that you like to be at least um, associated with or specialized. And you get to know that, that um, <laughs> it's not always good to, <clears throat> sorry, keep your money in the, in the savings account, okay? It's not also all good <laughs> to throw all your money in what? In, uh, in uh, shares, okay? And that is how uh, you should be able to manage money to be able to get it value um, appreciated all the time. You know, that's what it is. So if you have money, you, you have to, you have to think after, out of, after the, uh, of the bus, wherever you are, probably somebody think that, no, if I look at real estate, it doesn't, it doesn't crash like that. It doesn't go so low to the extent that the, 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 I'm going to lose my money or I'm going to lose the value of my money. How do you do that? Would you push your money in there? These are all some of the things. And at the end of the day, you should be able to think into details, arrive at a very finite decision because you have some sort of knowledge to be able to think through, okay? Or you have been enlightened as to all these things that it's very important in business. As a result, when you are making decisions, you think about all those. Thank you. Thank you, Noran. Good. So we do have a question here that says, John pays for a new smartphone by writing what? A check. Okay. John pays for a new smartphone by writing a check. <laughs> Um, in this instance, money is functioning as what? <clears throat> is somebody there? Medium for exchange. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. You know, the name of the characteristic is just ask what the question is asking for. The name of that characteristic, it says what? He pays for a new smartphone by writing a check. He did what? He exchanged his with what? Something, medium of exchange, medium of exchange. So these, these things, it's, 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 it's straightforward. And you shouldn't get um, confused that when you say unit, unit of account, is it used to do what? Compare prices of goods and services? What, what is it? That is unit. You will be able to at least compare okay, and see that, that, hey, this is how this product is. This is how much that product costs. Okay? Medium of, of exchange. Do people use it in trans, uh, transaction? You have to ask that question. Ask yourself that question. Do they use it? Yes. If they do use it in transaction, then it becomes what? A medium of exchange, okay? And on the last part, I said it. Is it a way people do what? Can transfer or their wealth, okay? In the present, as I said, the $20, okay? To the future. Or you try to do what? Invest that money into a land, into a real estate, into something else that you'll be able to quantify or that will be able to assess, all right? That's what we term as store of value. So unit of account, medium of exchange, um, store of value. That is the three characteristics of what? Three characteristics of money. And I hope we will not forget. We got to wrap through this quickly. <coughs> Sorry. So the money supply, what do we mean by the money supply? When we say money supply, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Money supply. At the end of the day, the overall money in an economy is referred to what? What we term as money supply. The overall, all the money. <laughs> okay, that is the money supply. And there are ways we can do what? We can track this money. There are ways we can track all these monies, okay? Based on different categories, all right? Let's see. So we have two ways to track the money supply. Two ways. We have the first one that we term as what? The M1. What does the M1 consist? M1 consists of the most liquid assets. 
the most liquid assets, okay? That is M1, all right? And then when we talk about the M2, what does the M2 means? The M2 is the broader measure of the money supply, which includes M1 itself plus less liquid assets. When we say less liquid assets, we, are we all doing accounting here? Yes. We say less liquid asset. What does that mean? Uh, less uh, have a less capability of turning it into uh, cash. Thank you, thank you. You see, we have we have um, scholars here indeed, and I'm very happy. At least you're able to do what transfer one knowledge from one particular course into another course that shows that you are building knowledge and skills all right thank you for that so less um less liquid assets it's not um, um those ones that hey the next day you're able to um, get your cash right there or change into cash right there so that is less liquid assets okay so it's include that that's the m2 includes that so now liquidity the degree to which an asset can be what? Readily converted into currency, into cash, liquidity, all right? That's what we are talking about. So if it's less liquid, it means <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe my phone is less liquid, right? Because my phone is um, um, 2013 um, module. So it will be difficult for me to exchange it for money. Um, so that is what we are talking about, okay? Anything that you cannot just um, get out there, get an evaluation for you to get um, cash in returns becomes very less um, liquid. And along the line, we can give more examples or throw more light on it. So um, when we talk about M1, money supply, this is what it includes. It includes what? Demand deposits, okay? Demand deposits. That is money, um, uh, money supply in the M1. We also have what? We have the traveler's check. <clears throat> we have other checkable deposits and the what? The actual currency. The actual currency. That is what it includes. So at the end of the day, you know what is in M1. And don't forget, when we talk about the two categories that will be able to trace it, if you look at the last one, it says what? The M2 includes what? M1, but not what? The less assets, okay? So you get to know that all these things are at the end of the day going to be part of um, what we call it, um, the M1 category that we're gonna be used to track and excluding um, the, um, the, um, the less asset ones, okay? So money supplies consist of most liquid assets most liquid assets okay demand deposits are more commonly um referred to as um how do i put it yeah referred to as um demand deposit okay over here we say check check checking um checking accounts right um checking accounts okay um somewhere we say current accounts okay current account so checking account balances are incorporated into um, the, this M1, okay? That is what we term as um, um, demand deposit. Traveler's check, I'm not sure if nobody knows about, no one knows about traveler's check. They are money, okay, also, but um, uh, what I see. Um, in, in a certificate form, I'm not sure if you go to bank and you tell them, I need a traveler's check. Okay, they will be able to give it to you. It's more like like a, 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 a it's a check, yes. But how? What kind of check is it? So that's what I'm trying to say. It's a form of in a form of certificate or in a form of some sort of um, check that they print your information and all those uh, information on there for you that you can use also to be more common than any other um, today. Okay, so that is um. Um, what do we term as traveler's check? Uh, on the other hand, we have um, the checkable deposits. It also includes what? Deposits that automatically transfer money, deposits from your savings 
to check in. We have people like that. At the end of the day, you have an agreement with your bank that when they pay me every week, take $20 from my checking and put it into the savings or from my savings and put it into the checking. Okay, this is what we are talking about. Um, we also have um, the actual currency, which is a cash that we have. In accounting, we say what? Cash on, on hand, right? That is the actual currency. As is as liquid as it gets to, okay? Every now and then. Let's move forward quickly. So um, what is included in the, in, in the M2 is the M1, right? Then we have the savings deposits. We have the what? We have the small denomination um, time deposit as well, okay? And then we have the retail money what? Retail money um, funds. <coughs> savings deposits take time to do or to convert into currency, okay? There are so, so many processes you have to go through, okay? At the end of the day, it's going to be um, um, it's going to be converted into it, but it takes some time to do that. We also have the small denomination um, time deposit, like um, um, shares, like CDs, um, that is certificate of deposit, right? All those, okay? It can also be converted into money at the end of the day, all right? Okay, so that is what we term as, um, um, uh, what we call it, um, the M2, uh, money supply. So we can track money um, in the system. The money supply that we we have, that we use, that is in circulation. We can all do all these by going through the tracking in this category. Okay. Um, we have the retail money funds. What does that also include? Money markets, mutual bonds, um, funds, and all those things also becomes what? Retail money funds. Don't forget about it. I always try to give you a clue. When I was doing my uh, my MBA, even from my um, first degree level, this is how I learned. Okay, just look at the name of that kind of uh, 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 topic or that kind of statement or that kind of phrase. Let it ring bell in your ears. Retail. When we say retail, what comes to your mind? They are selling something, right? So retail money funds should tell you that, yes, this is what they are doing. The money that they do what? They sell. That's the money market. Okay? So the money market, uh, mutual funds, we term them as what? Um, retail money funds. All right. Let's see. Now, which of the following statements about money supply is true? Can somebody help us here? I've been talking throughout the morning and I need water. Anybody? Which of the following statement about money supply is true? Letter E. D. Did you say? Letter E. I don't get you. We have A, B, C, and D. The A say M. M2. Oh, okay. Let me see. Who is that? Um, Noren. Rhoda say A. And um, Noren say C. So who is going to support A? Who is going to support C? A what? C. Oh, boy. We have two Cs. Anybody supporting A? Uh, me, I support letter A. You support A, okay. I was going to say me and uh, Rodas are family, so I support Rodas. <laughs> so, um, but you know, letter A is true also, right? Yes, um, it's 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 going to be A, okay. Award and Nora will always beat me down, but today it looks like me and Rodas are going to get them. Okay, let's look at this. I'm going to go back for you to see the slide, okay? It says what? Which of the following statement about the money supply is true? M2 includes money mutual funds. Let's see. 
Um, why am I going forward? <laughs> okay. Come on, what did I do? Good. So, money mutual funds. What is that? Can somebody tell me? Because I just said something about that. That is the retail money funds. Okay? That is where you could do what? Be trading the money. So at the end of the day, if you go here, just after this slide, and the question says, which of the statement is true about money supply? Okay? And they say M2 includes money market mutual funds. That is true. Okay? That is true. So at the end of the day, um, um, that is the answer for this question. So we all win and we all win together. So at the end of the day, if I get um 50 cent, I'm gonna give Nora maybe five and then I'll give award also five, then I'll take 40. All right, so that is the answer for this question. Let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you, um, Judlin. Thank you, um, Rodas. Thank you, Noran. Thank you, Awad. Good. Professor, so, let's uh, try to... the saving uh, deposits. Go ahead. The saving deposits. What is the nature of it? The saving deposit. Um, you see, I, I know you don't attempt to, you are not attempting to um, compare saving the passage to mutual bonds, right? Or mutual uh, money. Um, no, 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 no. Because okay, good. What because I understand. The savings the deposit. Deposits, okay, go ahead. What I understand saving the deposits, it's, it's when I go, for, for example, go to the bank, take uh, uh, a certain amount of money and keep it in a savings account, okay, which I am saving for long term. Or short term, it doesn't matter, but I'm doing savings. Mm -hmm. Is this correct? That's correct. That's correct. That is so savings. This the case, and, this, and this saving could be a large or small. Um, it could be small, it could be um large. And this is what you have to know that based on the kind of um Regulations, okay, burning um, um, for that, that particular um, saving deposit is not like every simple, uh, like your savings account. Don't use the, the savings over there like a savings account. We have a checking account, which others will call it current account. But the saving deposit is not savings account. Okay, so it's not um, that quick for you to get the money right away. I hope you get you get what I'm saying. I don't want to liken that to. No, my people. question is why it can't be. Uh, the answer of, of the question cannot be C because it's large time deposits. Meaning, I'm putting deposits for 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 savings. When you say large uh, uh, large time deposits, what what do you mean? For a period more than more than a year. Okay. A period more uh, more than a year. Okay. That is that is something you have to consider again. How often, okay, do you service the account? Or how often is that account being serviced by the bank to you? Are they going to give you interest on a daily basis, on a monthly basis? on a quarterly basis, on a yearly basis. How is that account being a save, savings deposit being able to do what? Being serviced. Mm -hmm. You have to look at this. If it is not, you cannot just say maybe because it's um, a period over one year, it makes it um, a large time deposit. Okay. I'm not sure it makes sense to somebody. Uh, Are you? I'm trying to get it. <laughs> so, soon as soon as you you try to liken savings the savings deposit 
to um, savings account, you are in trouble. You will never understand it. Because savings deposit, somebody can have it within maybe, say, a month or two. Okay? That's the longest they could do that. But for you to get that into um, back into cash or something like that, it sometimes takes a little time for you to do what? To convert that. It's not that straightforward. Again, you go somewhere and we call it, um, what do we call it? Fix the passage. Okay? I'm not sure if you have heard fix the passage as well. Okay? Fix the passage. You go somewhere and you say, oh, I have maybe $20,000 in my account. Um, I'm not having that much interest on the on the savings account. So I want to just use this um, money in the savings to, to um, sign up for fixed deposit. Yes. You will not be able to use that money until that period, which is being attached to the fixed deposit. Maybe um, if it is 90 days or six months, depending on the agreement. But this is also not the same as savings deposit because you can access your money in maybe two, three days if you are in need of money, just that you will not get the interest due. I'll okay. try to get it. <laughs> Somebody's getting it. All right. So along the line, if something else comes, we'll push it to you. So good. At the end of the day, that is what we do have. So that is um, um, what we term as. Um, so the equation of exchange, the equation of exchange. Now, what is the meaning of that? What is that? The equation of exchange, all right? At the end of the day, how do we define uh, um, nominal versus um, uh, real variables. Huh? What is that? Okay. Variables measured in monetary units or prices, okay, are what we term as what? Nominal, nominal um, um, variables. And then we have the real variables. They are variables measured in numerical units or outputs, okay? Um, uh, nominal variables uh, such as um, money supply, can, uh, it can affect um, real variables such as the gross domestic, domestic product, uh, product, okay? It can affect um, 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 real variables such as um, the um the the gross domestic product the gdp okay it can affect that we can also all the time invest investigate um and um under what circumstances normal variables might affect the real um world by using equation of um exchange which will always do what show us the real output which is related to the money supply so putting this together, you should be able to do what? Differentiate both, okay? Know what is it, uh, the nominal, what stands for, and what the real will also um, be able to um, stand for. So that is what we have. So at the end of the day, you should be able to do that, and then we'll be able to move forward. Classical, um, Dichotomy, classical dichotomy. So, or somebody will say classical dichotomy. Um, dichotomy. Um, by definition, the idea that real variables such as employment and output are independent from nominal variables like money. Okay, that is what we term as what classical dichotomy. Okay, so at the end of the day, the idea that real variables, example, 
employment and output are independent from normal variables like money. Okay, that is classical dichotomy. Good. Velocity of money. What is that too? Velocity of money. Um, by definition, the number of times on average <clears throat> and in a given time period that each dollar or in a nation's money supply is used to purchase, to make purchases. That is the velocity of money, okay? Velocity of money. If you, again, forget everything, think about what velocity is. What does velocity mean? Okay, velocity of money, okay? The number of times on average in a given period, okay, that each dollar in your country, okay, is used to make purchases. Don't forget, I told you, we can track that under the category one and two. So now, how do we track that? Velocity of money, okay? And that is what I've been giving to you as um, the definition right there. Velocity of money is what we have been saying. That is um, the number of times, maybe a dollar, in a given period will be used, okay, in purchases in your community, your country, or wherever you find yourself, okay, it can be measured. Uh, money can be measured in that category. Money can be measured in that category. So now, how do we measure that? Equation of exchange. Equation of exchange. So mathematically, by definition, a mathematical identity, which is MV equivalent what is equal to PY, which states that money supply um, um, time uh, velocity is equal to the price level time output or real GDP. The equation of exchange implies that nominal purchasing power, which is M into bracket multiplied by V equals what? Equals the nominal expenditure, okay? The nominal expenditure, which is um, P, okay? Multiplied by what? M. So at the end of the day, we have that mathematical identity right there. So um, 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 what do we call it? Money, money, um, um, Money, um, um, money supply multiplied by what? Velocity, okay? It's equivalent to what? Um, um, the PY is um, price and then what? Um, that is real GDP. The price and then a price multiplied by Y, which is real GDP. So at the end of the day, that is the, um, that is the formula that we have over there. MV is equivalent to P, Y, MV is equivalent to PY. Please pay attention to it. You see, we have it right there. This MV, how did the MV came about? This PV, how did the PV came about? So at the end of the day, they are telling you that the M is money supply, the V is time velocity, and then what? The P is what? Price level, and then the real GDP is Y. What you do is multiply the M by V, and then that will be equal to what? Or it will equal the P multiplied by Y, which is PY is equal to M MV, or MV is equal to PY. Good. So now this is the formula in, in, um, in um, our shot. At the end of the day, they put everything together for you. So if you, before you, you, you attempt any question, you should have this kind of formula in mind to be able to attempt this kind of question. So suppose the money supply is $1,000. Our economy produces car, um, car washes that cost $10 each during that month each of the 50 citizens of the country get their single car washed three times, 
what is the velocity of money? What is the velocity of money? How do we calculate this? They have given us M. They have given us P. They have given us Y. What are they trying to tell us? Look for V. Can somebody do this? When we see this in the exams um, time. Is somebody with me? Oh, nobody's here? No, we are here. Oh, okay. I thought I'm but here by we, myself. We prefer to, to hear you, Professor. <laughs> oh, okay. I just want to make sure that it, it, people don't see it just written over there. At the end of the day, you know your M. They've given you the M. They've given you the P. They've given you the Y. So you should be able to do what? You should be able to find your V. The same way, if they give you the V, they give you the P, and then they give you the M, you should be able to find what? Your Y. The same way, if they give you the P, they give you your Y, and they give you your V, you should be able to find your M. That is what I'm trying to say. So just have that formula in your head so that at the end of the day, if you see a question of such, you can be able to do justice to it. MV equivalents to what? PY, knowing that M is what? Money supply, V is velocity, P is price level, and then the Y is what? The real GDP. The word to the Y is enough. Good, so that is um, another um, calculations right here for you. So at the end of the day, this is what they calculated from here. Let me see. Okay. So this is the velocity. Um, that is 1.5. And that's what we have over here. Good. So uh, this is a work example that they have also. Suppose um, the money supply is only 500. Our economy produces car washes that cost ten dollars each. During that month, each car of um, each each of the fifty citizens of the country did what? Get their single car washed three times. Okay, what is the new velocity of money? The other time it was a thousand watt money supply. This time around is five hundred. So what happens at the end of the day? We see that. 500 was multiplied by V and then equivalent to what? $10 multiplied by 150. So how do we even find out um, the V? See, you multiply 150 by 10, you get $150. Okay. Oh, what am I talking about? <laughs> so um, is it 150,000? At the end of the day, you multiply 10, 10 by, um, <laughs> as I said, $500. So 150 multiplied by 10 will give us what? 1,500, okay? So 1,500 and then is equivalent to what? Is equivalent to um, 500 multiplied by V. So how do we come up with our V? All you do is you cross through, or you someone say you multiply through by 500. So the 500 uh, multiplied by V will be divided by 500, and it will um, cross out the 500, and we'll have only V. At the end of the day, you have 1500 divided by 500, and you get what? Three. I hope somebody is following. I hope. Anyway, I hope somebody is following me. Um, you are a research economist working for the Federal Reserve Bank of Marketopia. You know, use the data below to answer each of the question following or each of the following questions. Suppose you have the M as a thousand, V, M, V, uh, sorry, the V as two, and then the Y as 500. Solve for the price level of Marketopia. 
Who is giving us that answer? Oh, that was a word. That was very quick. Okay, tell your people how you got it. I know you got it. So MV, which is 1000 by 2, uh, equals uh, YB. Right? Uh, so why we have Y is 500. So B uh, is the one we need. So MV uh, divided by Y equals B. So 1000 by, by multiply by 2 divided by 500. So everybody got it? 1000 multiplied by 2 is what? Not you, a what? Maybe somebody started at okay. eight. So 1,000 multiplied by two is 2,000, right? Divided by 500. Okay, very good. We are in good shape. Don't tell me I never told you when you start um, chewing your pen. Good job, Awad. Thank you for the explanation. You just have to know what you are doing and you'll be fine. That's all. Um, no, I'm not sure if um, all my friends are deserting me now, you know? Nora doesn't want to uh, uh, call me. Uh, 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 Rodas is running away. Judeline is running away. Nobody want to help me, but they need to help me here. You know, I need help. Oh, where is she? She's testing, you know. Soon as I said Nora, she tested quickly. You know, she's telling us the answer. Um, Nora and then uh, Rodas, thank you. They said the answer is D. You both of you are not talking, so you don't you don't want to share your colleagues how you came around uh, uh, about your your answer. I want them to know. Do we uh, all know? I I can give an explanation, no problem. Oh, thank you, Noren. Thank you. Go ahead. The V will be equal P Y over M. So we will multiply the four for the P, multiply by five thousand of the GPD mm -hmm. uh, GDP. Mm -hmm. divided by the 2,500 for the M. That will give us eight as a Thank velocity. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Noren. Um, at the end of the day, she got that. I hope somebody will also follow through. Um, please don't disgrace the class. We are sharing everything we have. All your colleagues are sharing. So when you, feel, you find yourself in this type of situation with a question of such, do justice to it. I'm not telling you the question is coming, but make sure you can help yourself, if not even in this class. Good. Now, let's see what we have. Banking. Nobody is in the banking industry, right? Uh, if you are in the banking industry, I would have come to you tomorrow for a loan because bank plays a very crucial uh, role. We, we, we send them our money. We go to deposit our money there and then they trade with our money. At the end of the day, they give us a minute interest rate and then they charge those, they give them the, the money. A very huge interest uh, 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 rate, you know? But guess what? That is business. They need to pay what? They need to pay bills here and there, all those operational costs. They, uh, oh, sorry, open our heads. They have to do what? Pay for all those things. And at the end of the day, it is very important for them to do what? To factor that into the interest they charge. Good. So that is what uh, banking. Bankers or banks are businesses. You know, we all know that they are businesses. At the end of the day, we take our money into our savings thinking like, oh, I'm saving here. Oh, I'm saving. You are not saving. They are also using your money. Because at the end of the day, when you go and deposit your money there, I don't know if sometimes you know what is behind or you ever think about what goes on behind the scenes. When you and your teller are talking, you don't know what goes on behind the scene. But sometimes you know or do you think about it? Soon as you deposit your money, there will be somebody also standing on the other teller, telling the other teller, I need money. So it's what? Garbage in, garbage out. Your money goes in, they give it to somebody. Somebody's money comes in, they give it to you. This is what banks do, okay? To be able to run or to be able to um, be in business, okay? So they receive the passes money. 
they make loans to what? Borrowers using deposits as money. That is me and you. The money we go there to deposit, they use it to borrow other people and they make money on it. Guess what? We cannot do that because we don't have the basis of those people coming to us to borrow. Are they credit worthy? Um, do you know where they live? If they don't bring your money, uh, why are you going to look for them? Okay. Anyway, that is what it is. So at the end of the day, it's a business for them and that is how they run it. So they move savers money to what? Borrowers. They move savers money to borrowers. Okay. So it's, it's, it's business. Banking, it's business. So reserve requirements. Now we are getting into what makes them banks. Reserve requirement definition. The fraction of checkable deposit that banks must keep on hand as reserves, either as currency or on deposit with the Federal Reserve, okay? And that is a nice um, formula right there. That's a nice formula right there. That is reserves is equivalent to deposits multiplied by what? By reserve requirement, reserves. Required reserves is equivalent to deposit multiplied by reserves requirement. At any point in time, you have any talent, please call me or just give me uh, a quick alert. We don't have a challenge question based on the earlier formula that I showed to you. Determine a bank's required reserves. If the reserve requirement is 20%, and the bank has in 20,000 in deposit. What is the bank's reserved over there? At the end of the day, it is deposit multiplied by what? Required reserves, which is RR. So 20 multiplied by, uh, sorry, 20,000 multiplied by what? 20% will give us what? 4,000. Any challenge here? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? No challenge. Okay. Good. Now, we are talking about in SS. Okay? SS reserves. I'm not sure who has SS reserves in this uh, class. I, I might have to talk to you later on because I need, um, I need some loans. So if you have some SS reserve in your bank, you let me know. Um, the amount of reserve that a bank can lend out to interest earning or to earn interest equal to total reserves minus required reserves. The amount of reserves that a bank can lend out, okay, to earn interest equal to total reserves minus required reserve. That is excess reserves. Okay, at the end of the day, what they have. So that is the formula as well. That is the formula as well. E, um, SS reserves equivalent to total reserves minus required reserve. I'm sorry. So there is a question for us to just do through quickly. And what does it say? The surety bank has SS reserves of 10,000. Its checkable deposits are 120. If the reserve requirement is 20% total, reserves equal what? Anybody? Anybody? Later, C. C. Um, how did you come up with that? The surety bank have an SS, okay? They have an SS of 10,000. Are you with me? They have an SS of 10,000, okay? And um, each checkable deposits is what? It's 120,000. If the reserve requirement is what? It's 20%. What is the reserve requirement? Thank you, thank you, um, Rodas. Thank you, um, Winnie. Thank you. You know, at the end of the day, all you do, you have your percentage, uh, res reserve percentage right there. You have your deposit. What do you do? Okay. You do your deposit calculation, uh, your percentage calculations come up. 
And then you have um, the bank's reserves right there. So um, what is the name? Winnie and Rodas are telling us that it's what? It's B. Anybody have a, an issue with that? Anybody have an issue? Okay, so 20% of 120 is what? 240,000. Um, yes, 24,000, sorry. So 24,000, what do you do? Plus your 10,000 will give you what? We'll give you the 34,000, which is B. Okay, so that is what we have. At the end of the day, that is your um, total um, reserve equivalence. Good. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you, Rodas. Um, good. We have another question over here, too. And what does it say? Banks' reserves are what? Banks' reserves are what? Are they asset to both the banks and its customers? Bank reserves are what? Asset to bank and liabilities to its customers. They are asset to both the bank and the district federal reserve bank holding them. They are asset to the bank and liabilities to the district federal bank holding them. Is somebody there? What are they? B. B. Okay. B. That is um, asset to the bank and liabilities to its customers. Oh, God. Then why do we have to go and give them our money? Okay, that, that is not going to be because it, our money cannot be quantified as a liability, okay? Um, they are using our money to trade. So at the end of the day, that is what we have. So I have um, Rodas, thank you. So I have um, the D. I'm not sure if somebody is going to um, be with us. Because I'm in the boat of Rudas. Now I jump, I jump out from um, um, Norrin's uh, um, technology car, you know. Now I'm in um, Rudas' boat. Can somebody join us? True or false? The assets, they are assets to the bank and liabilities to the what? To the District Federal Reserve Bank holding them. Are you with us? Yes. That's correct. Yes, it doesn't belong to them. Okay, it doesn't. At the end of the day, if any bank collapses or if any bank is in distress, what happens? What happens? Can somebody tell us? Nobody have any idea on this? You still go back to the federal government for bailout. Is that not it? Sometimes they will not even wait for you to get there. You have to merge with other companies or other banks. <laughs> are you are you are you with me? Are you with me? Okay. So that is what we have, and that is um, the D. Well, say that again. Actually, uh, I don't understand it um, this way because um, mm -hmm. a bank's reserves actually it is um, it is about the bank to be the lender for a, uh, a customer. So the customer actually borrow from him money. So when he borrow money, so it is the even it is the asset of the bank. Even it is. Its source already is another customer, but in this case, the bank will be, this reserves will be his asset and the customer that borrowed the money, it will be a liability on him. So it depends on the case and perspective we are looking to. It will not be an abstract case that the bank, uh, it is not an asset for the bank and liability for the customer. You see, you are looking at one side. You, you don't use the glasses. You see my glasses? You have to use the glasses to watch both sides. 
Yes, that is, that is what I'm talking about. Seriously, that um, the question has two perspectives. We discussed. That's that right. Being the but at the end of at the end of the day, on your side that you are looking for will be clarified. So finish. Do you know that you cannot just go into any bank and then take a loan? You know that. If you don't have good credit, you have to provide collateral in some countries. So where is the liability now? Are we are we clear now? I hope you don't need more than that. Uh, actually, it depends on the bank and the country because in some countries mm -hmm. it is very easy to have a loan, even if you don't have any guarantees that you will uh, pay this loan. So in this case, it will be a, li a liability on client and an asset for the the bank that, no. that need the client to return it back to them. No way! Before they give you a loan. In this country, United States, if you are working, guess what? They have to check your credit background. They have to make sure that you can pay. Okay? It's a guarantee. You know, that's why we have credit systems in United States. That is a way for them to do what? To have that kind of backing that you can pay. Probably they have to check the work you do, your expenses, as against the income that comes in. If you have any sort of um, um, property, if you don't have, they check this and they check your income to expenditure ratio. Those in accounting, you have to check the income to expenditure, income expenditure ratio to find out if it is too high. So if your income to expenditure ratio is too high, no, no, no. They will say, thank you. American will, will say, no, thank you. All right. And that's what it is. So at the end of the day, I don't want you to look at it from that perspective, but look at it from the perspective that is general for both um, borrowers and then creditors. Okay. So we have gone to put our money there. Somebody is going for that money. Before they can access the money, they have to go through a regent process. That at the end of the day, we don't see that as a liability. Um, when you do risk um, 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 risk management, you understand what I'm talking about uh, very well. Because at the end of the day, you're going to go into details and you get to understand that. I'm not sure if you still need uh, more juice. I have um, orange juice in the fridge. Do you agree with me, by the way, Noren? Or you still have um, reservations on that? Yes, yes, I agree. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You see, you you make the class very lively, very lively, and I like that. And sometimes somebody might think I'm, I don't mention their name or something like that. The more you talk, you ask me to at least engage you the more, you know. And you learn a lot, you know. At the end of the day, you are helping your own self. I have a friend who graduated from. Um, uh, uh, what we call it, with a bachelor, a bachelor's degree, and he, when he sees people, he's running away. He cannot even stand in front of them. What are you building? You are not building anything for yourself. So, thank you for 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 at least challenging me on that. At the end of the day, you need to understand. Thank you. Good. So um, now let's see if we can get into demand. Um, money demand quickly, and then I can leave you to go and then review your stuff for the next couple of days. What is the interest rate? What is the interest rate? Okay. At the end of the day, we've started our analysis all along, okay, of the role that money plays in our daily activities or in our economy. This is what we started with, okay? But it is so important to look at money and its demand, okay? Money and its demand, uh, or money demand. You have to look at it carefully. And that is where we're going with this, um, what is the rate interest or the, uh, the interest of rate? You forgo interest earning when you hold money. Those interest earnings, uh, what they are an opportunity cost. So when you decide to hold your money, what are you doing? You are holding what? You are holding your interest. Okay. You can think of the interest rate as the price of the money. 
if you borrow someone else money, it is the price you would have to do what? Pay to do, uh, to do, uh, to do so, okay? At the end of the day, this is what we are talking about. It is slightly related to what Nora is, is, was trying to explain to us, okay? It's slightly related to that. So at the end of the day, if I feel threatened about somebody coming to get the money from me and will not bring it, what would I do? I will hold on to my money, okay? That is where all um, very um, important um, processes will have to go through for somebody to be able to get it. But when you think of the rate as, uh, as, as the price of the money, then if you, if you try to do what? Give that money to somebody, it is going to be what? The price they will have to do what? Pay to you, okay? And that is what we term as interest rate. And as I said earlier on, we will be getting 0.04% and they will be charging people out there 5.2%. <laughs> I don't know how fair this is, but again, it's business. And I'm not here to judge um, whether it's fair or not. Anyway, so the demand for money. Money is often held for two reasons. In other books, you're gonna see three reasons, okay? Um, money is held for two reasons. And they say what? Transaction demand. Again, look at that word, transaction demand. So when you meet this question and they tell you, list and explain the two reasons for holding money, you will be able to do that. Again, look at the word, transaction demand. What does it mean? Transaction demand. You should be able to at least know what it means. Is a, is a, it means we hold money, okay? We as humans, as, uh, uh, as um, customers, whatever it is, we hold money for transaction on a daily basis. So to buy goods and services, to buy daily transactions, that is why we hold money, okay? Again, we hold money for what? Asset demand. Asset demand, just to hold money as what? As a form of savings for future. Okay, these are the two reasons. In other books, you're gonna see what we term as um, speculative demand, um, precautionary demand, and um, there's another one, okay? It's three other, um, there are other um, books that will give you a different way of um, holding money. But again, it all um, um, relates to this, okay? So yes, in other book, you see transactionary motive, you see speculative motive, and then you see um, precautionary motive, okay? So that is just like this, okay? It's just like what we have, just that they put the transactionary and precautionary, uh, sorry, transactionary and precautionary together, and they say transactionary over here. Okay, so to buy goods and services, um, daily transactions, emergencies, and all, at the end of the day, you hold money uh, as a future, uh, in the uh, savings for future emergencies and all those things, okay? Asset demand. Okay. So, now, when we say um, transaction demand, the demand curve is what? Can somebody see what is on the screen? In elastic. Who is who was that? Me. Okay. Thank you. Because it is what? It is vertical, okay? And it tends to be what? Inelastic, all right? Transactionary demand, okay? It, it, I don't know how to put it again. You see, it's not sensitive to interest. I don't know if somebody understands that, you know? It's not. 
because at the end of the day, um, some books will also say the uh, the uh, um, yeah transactional motive and precautionary. You will need it. You step outside. You want to buy something. Oh, your 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 daughter comes to you. Your 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 son comes to you. You need money to go and buy candy, whatever. You 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 keep money for these kind of things. So it doesn't necessarily means that every money they will come to you. You have to go to bank. <laughs> I hope somebody is getting what I'm trying to say. You know. So on a daily basis, yes. But we have gotten to um, a period in technology whereby some don't even have cash on them. I'm not sure if you are aware of what's going on. We have gone to that level of technology that everything is about card. Everything is about card. Everything is about swiping. Everything is about logging onto your phone and making that kind of a transaction. And that is where we are going. So at the end of the day, uh, I don't even know how we're going to um, tend to describe this demand for money. Okay. So in the meantime, you and I still keep cash and that's what we use cash for. Good. And this is what we have as asset demand. Asset demand, just like every other demand care. Asset demand is going to move from left to the right. Asset demand is, is sensitive to interest, okay? They had the interest rate on the other assets. Guess what? The less attractive the money becomes, okay? It's sensitive, very, very sensitive. So at the end of the day, um, you'll be able to at least plan your life around it. Good. So what do we have? Let's see. The money demand, okay? Money demand is also the same thing. This is just combining um, the, the two curves, okay, given to us. That is the first and the second together, and you'll be able to um, have your um, money demand right there. Good. We have a question. Uh, I don't know if somebody is going to help me. Says what? What function of money does transaction demand align with? What's, what function of money does transaction demand align with? You have money in your pocket. You go out there, you want to do some business, uh, you want to buy something. What are you doing? Medium of exchange. So simple. You are a medium of exchange. You are just exchanging. Medium of exchange to get whatever you need, right? That's it. You don't need to think about it. All you have to think about it is the function of money, um, um, the trans, uh, what do we call it? Which function of money does transaction demand align with? It means transaction demand. You are having some sort of transaction out there. You are buying something. So you are exchanging something. So at the end of the medium of exchange, just listen to the words in the statement or the phrase, and that will coach you or support you to make um, a quick um, decision. Let's see. Oh, we do have another question. And what does this question say? An increase in real GDP will do what? An increase in real GDP will do what? Will decrease asset demand and shift the demand, demand for money to the right. Will increase asset demand and shift the demand for money to the left. Decrease the transaction demand and shift the demand for money to the left. Increase transaction demand and shift demand for money to the right. That is, uh, uh, that is GDP right there. Gross domestic uh, product will increase transaction demand and shift the demand for money to the right. Is somebody in my boat? Is somebody in my boat? 
or any challenger? So the answer is gonna be D. Okay, good. Now, on the opposite side, money supply. At the end of the day, money supply. If we're able to calculate whatever money that we give out or is in circulation, whatever it is, now money supply, okay? We are back to the other side of the module, okay? To be able to represent the supply of money, okay? This is um, is a relationship between what? The, the, um, between money supply and um, its um, interest rate, okay? Money supply and the interest rate. That's what we do have under this. So we do have money supply. And at the end of the day, in most mar uh, normal markets, there are many suppliers, right? In most normal markets. Somebody remember? Perfectly competitive. Okay. In most, <laughs> in most normal markets, there are what? There are so many suppliers. Okay. But in the money market, we have only one supplier. Is somebody with me? We have only one supplier in the United States. Okay. The federal or the Fed is able to control the money supply at the level they target. So what is the federal government trying to do here when we want to go back to our, our market? When we consider money supply, what do we see the market, uh, the money, um, the, the federal government in position in terms of market? Can somebody help us? Oh, okay, man, soon cannot make it. Oh, is somebody here? You know, these, these, these people are afraid I'm gonna charge them. But if they don't talk, I'm rather going to penalize them. Because I see, I see them here, I see you. You are here, talk. What is this federal government who controls the money supply tends to be in terms of market. We just did this last week, last two weeks. Oh God. The question earlier on, I posed to you. I said in the normal market, we have many suppliers, right? Don't let me sleep on the class. So at the end of the day, is the, no, is the government not acting in, uh, um, what do we call it, in a monopoly um, um, situation? Is somebody here? Yes, it is a pure monopoly because there's yes, no for money except for the government. Very good. Very good. So at the end of the day, I just want to see if we have some sort of um, previous knowledge to help us, it's like we are re uh, re revising what we have done for your own good. Thank you, Noran. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that is what it is. So the, the, the central government will only control that. You and I, we cannot go and compete in that. We don't even have power to get there. <laughs> so that's what we have for money supply. So we have a question here. Let's see if we can answer that. Um, the supply of money graph us. The supply of money graph graph us what? That is what B. Thank you, Rodas. Thank you, thank you, Rodas. Thank you, thank you, Rodas. That is um. Somebody wanted to talk. I saw oh, did like that's right. Thank you. Thank you. So it's very car. Okay. Very car. So the supply of money graphs as a very car line. 
Okay, good job. Now, that is, we are going to the last subtopic, then we'll be able to get out from here. And that is interests, the money market interests in the money market. Okay, interest rates. Okay, the interest rate helps us make decision about saving or borrowing money. I think I said something about um, this some time, some few minutes ago. It, it helps us, it helps anybody in business to make a decision. If you are in business, you're going to borrow maybe $10,000 to maybe um, expand your business and the interest rate is high. At the end of the day, you're going to know that it might not help you because you end up being in cash trap and you're going to be needing money and the money will grow like uh, every other plant that you see, you know? So we make decisions based on these kind of things. That is the interest rate. It helps us make decisions, sound decisions about saving or borrowing money. Like I said earlier on, if you think that putting your money in a bank is not yielding that much interest, would you still keep it there if you have business sense? Again, I'm not telling you to go and redraw all your future savings and go and gamble it. If I say gamble it, I'm not saying you're going to what? Um, a place to go and gamble. No. But you're going to do a business that you don't know the outcome. And then you have redraw all your money. No. We don't live in this world like that. So you test the waters. Before you go in, just evaluate what is going on. Start with a little um, maybe capta and then build upon it. If it's a new business that you are just starting afresh, yes, that's how. Even if it's an, it's, it's, it's an existing business you are going to buy, yes, you need to still study the, um, the market terrain and then do all research and then um, come up with something um, good to be able to see that, hey, yes, if we are able to invest this, our returns is going to be like this, projected. And it's possible because this is how the, 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 the history of um, um, purchases in this industry has been. You understand? So that is what we do. We base on that to make decisions. It comes from the interactions of all those involved in the market for money. For example, the interactions of what? Supply and demand. All things being equal, this is going to do what? Cause an increase or a decrease in the interest rate. So now what we have here is what? That is what? The money supply and at the end of the day, the interaction of the money um, demand and money supply give us what? The equilibrium interest rate. This is where Mr. Mr. Demand and then Mrs. Supply agree to meet at. They are at the corner right there. See, where they meet at is where the red sign crosses the blue. Okay? That is the equilibrium interest rate. Equilibrium interest rate. I hope somebody is alive and will be alive throughout the program. Um, lastly, we have in the money market, the equilibrium interest rate occurs when there is what? Somebody help? Somebody help? See? Thank you. I knew there was, um, uh, what do we call it, 911? In United States, or uh, maybe Red Cross in the person of Noran right there, who is going to save me. So in the market money, the equilibrium interest rate occurs where the demand for money equals the supply of money. And it's right there, just one slide after that. So oh, everybody should have started uh, memorizing or saying something because this is the last slide that we just look at, okay? where the demand for money equals the supply of money. Thank you so much, Noran. Um, before we, we end today's section, um, I reviewed with those who came earlier. I know some will always come late. Five minutes to the time they log in, 
you don't know, attendance is always being taken in this class. Um, we were reviewing what is possibly going to be on the exams. Um, I did give you um, some areas earlier on, which is um, including the, um, which is including the fundamentals, which is module one, demand module three, supply module four, market efficiency module six, consumer choice module eight, perfect competition module 10, monopolistic competition module 11, and then money, which is module 13, okay? And I said that you're going to have three written questions and all of them must be attempted. Three written questions, all of them must be attempted. And then the entire questions are 45 in number. Okay, they are just 45 in number. So at the end of the day, it's not any difficult questions. It's just multiple choice, fill in the blanks, and then true or false. And then matching the correct with the correct um, 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 uh, objects or whatever it is. Okay, it's a matching um, concept that you're gonna be able to match the correct um, answers. All right, so at the end of the day, that is what you're going to have. I was explaining to others that when you get a question that it says, list and explain, do that. Don't give me the nayas that I'm in New York and I'm going to um, New Jersey. I have to go through Connecticut before coming to New Jersey. No, if you are in New Jersey and you're going to New York, you go straight to New York. You don't go through Connecticut, okay? That's exactly what I'm trying to talk about. If I'm in New York and I'm going to Canada, I'm not gonna go through Britain. You understand what I'm saying? Go straight, answer this, and save time, all right? You don't need to give me more than two page, uh, more than two paragraphs. But I'm not sure if somebody does not know what two paragraphs is. A paragraph is a minimum of three sentences. So if I ask you a question and say, not more than two paragraphs, I'm not expecting you to give me more than six sentences, okay? And again, these questions that are coming, some are straightforward, list and explain, list and explain, list and discuss. It's so simple, all right? Um, so you have um, one scenario question and one list and uh, two, I believe two list and explain. And then one scenario question that you have to think out of the box to tell us what is going to happen. Assuming um, gas prices have risen so high and everybody is looking for gas, what will happen? For example, you have to think through using the demand and supply knowledge to apply. I'm not sure if somebody have a question, there is something wrong. And I also said earlier on, um, your colleague, Noran, earlier on mentioned that she needed um, a little time um, or today's um, quiz that is handing after this class to be extended so that they can be able to take it later on. Yes, it was a good thing. Um, when I checked, it was only two or three people who have taken the exams. So I decided to move it to tomorrow, the same time that it ends today. In that case, everybody will be fine. Um, so you all have it. So you give your, your, your two cents to Nora for bringing that up. So I will wait for your questions. If you do have, it doesn't matter if it's not concerning this class, as I might not be talking to you again in this class. Uh, Sam? Yes. It's just an unsolicited ideas. Do you change your mind to listen the chapters or the module for the test? Oh, no, that is gone already. Okay, thank you. No, that's fine. Any more questions? Feel free, just um, open up any question that you have. No more questions? All 
Awad, no question? No, oh, Professor. Say that again. No, Professor, thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, no question, Lauren? Thank you, Professor. Okay. Um, who again? Winnie, no question? Clement, no question? No, no question. No question, no question, okay. So, no question, Winnie. All right. So, it was a pleasure having you for the past um, couple of weeks. Um, what I'm going to tell you is a personal advice. It's not easy to go through the educational ladder I always want to encourage each and everyone to just keep fighting. Have what we have, what we term as a determination spirit, a perseverance spirit. Even when everybody said it cannot be done, you have to say it can be done. You should not all the time listen to people coming with negativities, but rather the positivity or the positive aspect of it, as we will be many in a class, but maybe one or two will end up being in a very prominent places. So have a focus, have a vision, have a mission, have an ob objective that by the end of maybe 2024, I want to make sure that I have graduated from this program. I will make sure that I will not waste my money. I want to make sure that when I graduate from this program, this is what I want to do in the next couple of years. What is your projective goal for the next couple of years, for the next five years? What do you want to do? So do not let the negativity in a group, among your peers, um, at your workplace, try to do what? Bring you down. But all the time, you look ahead and then have that kind of focus that no matter what it is, I'm going to make it. This is what I can tell you. If you do have any question, feel free to send me a WhatsApp message and I'll be always available for you. I wish you all the best in your exam and I know each and everyone is going to do well. Um, best of luck to you all. Thank you. So. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Awad. Thank you. So if thank there you, is no, Professor. thank you, Nora. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you, Nora. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you, Award. Everybody um, who made this class a success. I wish you all the best. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. All right. Bye, Jodlin. Thank you all. Thank you, Rudas. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Best of luck to you. Bye.